I'm here with John Spanos, former, formerly Director of Scouting. What exactly is your new title as of 2013? Uh, the new title is Executive Vice President of Football Operations. So how has your job changed from what you've done in the past? I think a lot of it is similar. Uh, I, a little bit of it is kind of having more of a role in the overall general football operations department, different areas as opposed to specifically scouting. Um, so just doing a little bit more. Okay, so I'll ask you the same question then that I asked uh, Tom Telesco and Mike McCoy. When it comes to depth in this year's draft class, what positions do you see it at? Well, what I always answer people with is it's a scout's job to find depth at every position. Okay. So somebody might say, hey, this year there's not a lot of depth at corner. But what they may mean is in the first 10 picks, there may not be a lot of players worthy of corners, uh, picks worthy of the corner position. Maybe you can find some guys in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Uh, so I, I really feel, hey, there's depth out there at every position now. Um, I think, you know, if you talk to a lot of people, you, you could argue, I think most would try to argue that maybe O-line and D-line are, are, are certain positions. Um, I think there's some overall depth at corner, maybe not in the, the front line. So um, there are a lot of good players out there. How important is the interview process to you? The interview process is very important. It's a good time to get to know the player. Uh, the funny thing is the agents have coached them up a little bit, but you, there's still a certain part of the player that they can't, that still comes through. You know, it's like in, in the book Blink that Malcolm Gladwell wrote, you can get to know someone. You have a gut instinct reaction to, upon meeting somebody, and I think that, that is a very telling reaction, no matter how coached up they are. So the interview, interview process is very important. We have a lot of specific questions. We get to find out about them. Um, you know, a, a certain player may, we may want to ask. So who asks the questions? Do you, do you all take turns asking the questions and maybe you bring in a position coach depending on what type of player it is? Yeah, exactly right. Um, we have a variety of coaches in there, Tom and myself, um, and, and, and possibly depending on the player, some other scouts. And it's kind of like a firing squad. Um, everybody's free to just ask questions when they want. Like I said, we tailor the interview for the player. So d mainly what the subject's going to be depends on who it is. But yeah, anyone can ask questions. I asked Tom Telesco yesterday what type of players he's looking for. And he, was, he said, we want players that fit into our culture. Yeah. And he also talked about players that love football. When, when, when he says our culture, what does that mean as someone who's been with the Chargers really your entire life? Well, I think that first thing that you just said is a big part of it. Someone who loves football. Somebody who has the work ethic and somebody who feels it's important um, to make themselves better. Um, somebody who plays with passion, tough players, physical players, athletic players, basically the perfect player I'm describing. But um, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. No, but you know, a disciplined player, basically somebody who's going to represent the Chargers well, not only on the field, but off the field. Um, and I think Mike and Tom have done a great job working together and, and defining what that culture is going to be and what the vision is. John, how disappointed were, were you? I mean, last year, the two big free agent signings was Jared Gaither and Robert Meacham. How disappointed were you in their production this last season? Well, look, every every uh, free agent you sign, you have high hopes for. Now, sometimes it's not going to pan out. You can't dwell on that. You got to look towards the future. And, and you know, we made a lot of changes this offseason, and, and I'm really excited about the changes we made and bringing in Mike and Tom, and they're going to put together a great plan, and we're all going to work together uh, to fix areas that need to be fixed and, and continue to work on areas that are already good. You've been here for the, the advantage that you have over McCoy and Telesco. I mean, you know the guys in this team. You know the guys in that locker room. And some of them have said that Jared Gaither would not be welcome. Mike McCoy talks about a, about a clean slate, starting over with all the guys. What do you need to hear from Jared Gaither when it comes to his future with the Chargers? Well, I don't know if there's any uh, particularly one thing you need to hear. I think there's we're. No magical phrase. There's no magical phrase. I think what, what Mike and Tom are coming from is anytime you come into a new situation, you can't start making decisions without having the full background. The full, you know, they haven't been here last year. Right. Now, they're, they're taking all the right measures. They're talking to people like me who have been around. Mm -hmm. um, um, but they also need to do some, some work on their own. So, you know, they have, they've been here not even two months yet. So it's still very early in the process. I know some people are maybe looking for moves to be made right away, but there's a process to everything. So, it, you know, everything will happen in due time that's meant to happen. Last thing, who's the best, who's the best player in this draft? Teams talk, I'll always talk about we don't draft for position, we draft by best available. Who right now, who do you think is the best player in this draft? Well, that's very confidential information, Marty. I can't, I, this is, sure this, can. I can't give away, uh, you know, our, who we view as the best player may be there at 11. So Offense or defense? I can't even tell you that, but, uh, you know, who, who, who we view as the best player may be there at 11. I will say that it is a unique year in that usually you know who the top two or top three picks are going to be, and it's really uh, up in the air. I think the, you know, the draft ratings are going to be higher than normal this year. I would agree with you. Thank you very much for your time. You got it.